My name is Levon Soleil. They call me the Barbie Lady. I create dioramas with a fashion doll as a central character. This slideshow is the story of how I became the Barbie Lady. I was born in Roswell, New Mexico in 1946. I was one year old when the aliens landed. Rumor has it that during the crash, when the aliens were dying, their spirits left their bodies and occupied the bodies, the minds, and the souls of the babies in the territory. Some people assume that's where my humor comes from. When my mother married my father, he was working as a cartoonist for Walt Disney. She was 17 at the time, and by the age of 21, she had three children and was ready to be divorced. She was more dominant than he was. When she divorced him, she had concluded that all artists were no good. They had no backbone, and they were financially incapable of taking care of their families. Needless to say, I learned early on that it wouldn't please her if I grew up to be an artist. So instead, I became a criminal investigator for a bank investigating white collar crime. Although I was proud that I had become an assistant vice president and manager in the fraud department, it was just a title that brought me the approval of others. It gave me a reliable income to support my family. My mother's second marriage was to a wife beater and a pedophile. She had two more children with him, divorced him, and married two more times for a total of four. One of my biggest ambitions was to not be like my mother. She was abusive, narcissistic, self-centered, and had a desperate need to be loved. She did not get love and affection from her parents, and she wasn't capable of showing love and affection to her children. For most of my life, I blamed her for all of my character defects. Her verbal and physical abuse toward her children was very destructive to their personalities. We were told on a daily basis that we would never amount to anything. We were good for nothing and we were a burden. I grew up and married and divorced four times and had three children. I was damaged goods, but I did not know that at the time on a conscious level. I thought that what other people expected of me, thought of me, and felt about me was more important than what I thought and felt about myself or what I wanted for myself. So I did all the things I thought would gain the approval of others. I avoided looking at myself and my own character defects by getting married to men whose character defects were more blatant than my own. My first husband was my high school sweetheart. Looking back, I was not any more capable of loving myself or others than my mother was. My husband was a compulsive gambler, and my focus was on trying to change him. I believed that he was the cause of our unhappy marriage. I did everything I could to try to change him, and nothing seemed to work. So I thought having a child would change him. I got pregnant. We had a son, and that did not change him. The marriage ended in three years. I was 23 years old. I remarried at the age of 27. Before we married, I was concerned about how much alcohol he drank, but I assumed that as soon as we were married, that would change, and once again, I would be totally focused on him and his character defects. I thought that he was the cause of our unhappy marriage. I thought having a child would change him, so I had two more children, and that didn't change him. That marriage ended after 13 years, and I was 40 years old. I began to see a pattern in my relationships, but still didn't see that the decisions I made is what created the patterns. After that divorce, I got hooked on Latin ballroom dancing. There, I met and married my third husband, who was from South America. He was a lot more controlling than my first two husbands were. He was also alcoholic, and we argued about anything and everything on a daily basis. I divorced him after two years, and then two more years went by and I married him a second time. At the age of 50, in a six-week period of time, there was a cluster of crises that altered my lives. 
I had retired after 25 years of working for the bank. My father died. My son was hospitalized with a life-threatening condition, and my husband flew to Bolivia, South America after wiping out the savings accounts and maxing out the credit cards and sending me into bankruptcy. I was feeling suicidal, and I decided that I needed to get some professional help. I had already slipped into a very deep depression and found a lot of comfort in telling anyone and everyone who would listen what he did to me, and I got their pity and that felt like love to me. I also found a lot of comfort laying on the closet floor with the door closed to make it as dark as it could be. I'd crawl up in a fetal position and cry for hours and hours. I thought the bankruptcy was the worst thing that could ever happen to me, but at the end of it, it was the best. I had not learned what I needed to learn about myself in my first three marriages, and I saw that I couldn't learn anything about myself as long as I was focused outside of me. That was what it took for me to finally take an inventory of my own character defects and to begin to see the patterns of my own behavior. It wasn't until the pain that I was living in got greater than the pain that I was trying to escape from that I could make the changes that had to happen inside of me. I'd spent a lifetime of low self-esteem and came to a place where I saw that if I continued on this path, I would be miserable my whole life. I came to believe that the purpose of life was to evolve to the highest level of my potential by learning from the experiences that life had to offer. Now I had to decide what kind of person I wanted to be I had to believe that I could be that kind of person, and then every day I pretended to be that kind of person. I created a mantra and repeated it out loud every morning and evening. This is a portion of that. I am a person who is filled with love and kindness, patience and tolerance, understanding and compassion, trust and forgiveness, peace and tranquility, and good communications. I have good health in my body, in my mind, and in my soul. After about a year, my husband called me from South America because he felt compelled to explain to me why he did what he did. He explained that I had owned my own home. He didn't own any part of it. He was a contractor. It needed a lot of work, and he did all of the work. It took him a couple of years to do that work, and when he had finished the work, I was ready for a divorce. He saw that as a deliberate act on my part. I wanted to let him know that I was wrong, but instead I kept silent about that because it was the first time I was ever able to see something from somebody else's point of view and to understand why it is they had that point of view and to understand why it was he felt justified. I also realized that everything I had ever done, I also felt justified, and there wasn't anybody that I knew in my lifetime that didn't feel justified for the things that they did. When I hung up the phone, I was overwhelmed with a feeling of forgiveness for him and for everybody. And I realized that it was all the negativity inside of me that was causing my unhappiness. In August of 2006, now I'm 60 years old. I'm walking down Market Street in San Francisco, and I saw a gallery that had altered Barbies. It was the fifth annual altered Barbie show, and I went in to look, and I was fascinated. I'd never seen this kind of artwork before. It was entertaining and humorous, and I was inspired to create some of my own to keep that good feeling going. I love to shop in thrift stores, flea markets, and garage sales. I use recycled materials from sources to purchase used Barbies and other similar fashion dolls. I also find the props that I need to create these pieces. I can't say that I was ever inspired in the corporate world. It was just a job. It supported me, but often it drained me. Doing this altered Barbie artwork fills me up. I don't believe that everything happens for a reason, but looking back on my life, I see that who and what I am today is a result of every single moment that came before this moment 
and I'm pleased with who I am today. So even though I don't believe everything happens for a reason, I live my life as if I believe that everything happens for a reason. That gives me the ability to let go of trying to control and judge everybody and everything. I don't need to live in dread of the future because looking back, I see that the most rewarding experiences in my life came when I learned from negative experiences instead of being a victim of those experiences. Now I live one day at a time. I make plans for the future, but I don't plan the results.